So, um, as Federica said and introduced, uh, um, I'm available all these days to give you more um, insight about Tron, but let's say it's a spin-off of the University of Mind and then you do translation and oncology. And we are all set up in our system to translate the vaccine and the clinical trial with BioNTech, which is the clinical company involved in the um, translation in patients of all our research. So the, um, today I'm honored to be an interface between somehow what um, people present you about the power of uh, dual cytometry, but of course implementing in the project, but mainly or two PhD students is our I'm currently um, mentoring and uh, and is a very nice opportunity for me to remind that despite we could understand what uh, fact dual cytometry can give you, so in a sort of bulk system, whatever you want. Since I'm a microscopy and a microscopist, and I still continue to perform analysis of um, tumors by immunofluorescence, always I love to see uh, where my cells are located. So, this keeping in mind that whenever your project is dealing for quantification that is very quick and very fast, and uh, biological representative by fluocytometry, sometimes it's also nice to go to the immunofluorescence. And this is an example. This is a, one of the panel that we establish. Uh, recent, um, in the meanwhile, when I joined for the two different panel, one of the lympho panel with all the phenotype, this is just the gate strategy, and then a panel that we address more the myeloid cells. And uh, of course, those uh, cells were also up to, um, visualized by the immunofluorescence. So I give you a brief overview for what we have developed and how fluocytometry and uh, immunofluorescence uh, help for the understanding of clinical studies preclinical studies, and this is an example that uh, Tron, we develop a vaccine that is based on new antigens, so we screen which are the new sequence, new mutations that are expressed in tumor cell line, originally in mouse cell line, from the beginning. And then we design a vaccine that is based from 10 to 5 epitopes that are encoded by RNA vaccination. And as you can see, where despite the IV injection of tumor cells, a seed in the lung, of course, for mechanical um, blockage, and then they resemble a metastatic model. The tumor animal, really with several vaccination, prevents tumor formation. And that was the statistical part for the tumor growth and the, and the survival curve. But as I told you, that at that time, despite, as you can see, the tumor content was very low, fluocytometry was not at that moment very helpful for us. Uh, because we wanted to understand what was ongoing onto the tumor. And you can depict in the pentatope treated, so in the vaccine treated animals, some metastases like here, that obviously we deal with immunofluorescent or immunohistology at that time. And at this moment, we were focusing mainly on the CD8 infiltration of cells, as well as a Treg and CD4 as a tumor effector. And uh, based on the immunofluorescent <coughs> that we developed also, we could also depict, indeed, that in the metastatic nodes of uh, mice, we had a good infiltration of CD8 in treated mice compared to the control. And uh, more strikingly was also, here is not so easy to see, but is a strong <laughs> financement of uh, FOXP3 cells in the nodule, as then quantified here, compared to the untreated. So it was also a balance of how t CD4 effector cells, like CD4 here depicted in white, are really effective and not irregulatory T cells infiltrating to the tumor nodules. This was just an example that was uh, when I joined Tron, but actually then we developed two projects. That one is actually based on um, small molecule, the TLR7 agonist that recently has been published. But I want to just leave an overview for what again fluocytometry helped there and allowed me to set up mainly the TIL factor. So whatever we do routinely for sub tumor model. And then a short introduction for the RNA vaccine, more in detail, and based more on the PhD program of um, Nadia and Christian, where they develop a E7 RNA vaccine for HPV positive local uh, HPV positive tumors combined with local radiotherapy. So first we enter to the TLR7 agonist. It's a small molecule. TLR7 receptor uh, is mainly expressed by monocyte PDC B cells and. Um, induce a very strong induction of interferon alpha, obviously, as mainly the P plasma cytoidendritic cells are the most produced cells in the body to infection, and then 
to the TLF7 engagement, they would peak in very early time point after inoculation systemically, uh, a peak of interferonanza. We uh, identify a panel of cytokines, and mainly the most interesting is a type one, type one cytokines, and very few and very low level of uh, pyrogenic cytokines. And we benchmark our compound to the typical R848 compound known um, in the field. However, uh, this compound cannot be injected IV, despite we use a certain dose here, big for safety, because induce a cytokine storm. And, um, and then we are the one who are able to deliver um, TLR7 agonists systemically to reach and uh, treat the more uh, cancer types. And that's why we characterize uh, in our work. So first we aim uh, to address the typical column model, CT26, where we could have a benefit in tumor growth and in survival by several injections uh, every five days of this compound. And then we address a little bit more the mode of action, addressing other models like the melanoma B16. And again, here with the genetical model of the depletion of PDC exclusively by uh, utilizing this um, transgenic mouse model, with the diphtheria toxin, we abolish the treatment of the uh, compound, indicating the PDC are part of the mode of action of this treatment. Um, Similarly, we use uh, in uh, the same tumor model interferonal receptor knockout. And again, we abolish the effect in the knockout due to the lack of the sensing and the pathway of interferon alpha in the um, receptor positive cells. So the most striking, of, this was up to now not so new for TLR7 compounds, so it's known that in tumor PDC are really important for activation of the immune system. And, uh, and interferon alpha is one of the most important uh, cytokines mediated anti-tumoral effect. Um, however, we were able to show also recruitment to the tissue. So despite uh, injection of this small compound into the tumor, we, uh, into the IV, sorry, in the systemic system, we were able to detect uh, in the tumor 24 hours after active uh, injection. And that's why we enter in the characterization of the tumor. As I showed you before, we. Uh, this uh, gate strategy can be heavily discussed and nicely discussed with all the immunologists, which is the best gate for myeloid cells. For lymphocytes, everybody is really harmonized how to do the gate strategy and they say not many doubt. But we decided for that, and then of course we have the six different population of cells that are depicted here. And, uh, and despite this the great strategy, then we use the activation marker on top. So, uh, um, Federica mentioned to you, we have a 15 panel at the moment currently using. And that allowed us first to quantify the cells that are present into the tumor mass. And uh, I can show you briefly the most striking is the activation. Tumor, and tumor, sorry, what tissue was that? Tumor. The tumor. Right. So this was um, CD8 infiltration on, or in the tumor of uh, CD8 positive cells, not di strike different to before and T-Rex. And a nice announcement of a classical dendritic cell, the CD11B positive, and uh, a dramatic, let's say, a, a, a reduction of the polymorphonucleate uh, melodrine suppressor cells that allowed it to eventually um, calculate the suppressive index, favoring perhaps during treatment of SE1 and in anti-tumoral um, environment. So the rejection was occurring, and then we entered more in the phenotype of the cells, as I described to you. The first was the activation of PDC that was uh, strongly upregulated by CD86, indicated there. And then we enter more in the metabolism or the polarization and the phenotype of macrophages that are known to be um, um, INOS positive in the type of M1, that will be the anti-tumoral, versus the uh, downmodulation in the um, marker CD206, known to be typical for the M2 macrophages, that will be very pro-tumoral. And um, so at the end, our, get our characterization allowed to uh, polarize uh, the macrophages to a TH1, so M1 phenotype with the downregulation of CD206 and the upregulation of INOS and in combination also the activation via class two on the macrophages. 
So we dip deep, deeper on this characterization on, on the bulk, and this is gene expression by fluidine technology, not yet on the NGS that we uh, established later on, but this was just a panel of 96. Here are depicted some of the most interesting uh, genes that we screen. And the most important, we validate the down regulation of CD206 and an up regulation of several cytokine, let's say also interesting that several chymokines that will favor the recruitment of T cells, like all the interferon alpha induced chemokines, like CXL10, 12, 11, 12, and 13. And then also interesting the upregulation of molecules that are induced on the infiltration into the tumor, so molecules that allow rolling and extravasation for the bloodstream into the trauma, like NSA1 and ECAM1. So based on this characterization, then we went more on the factor on the population of the factor cells, so the antigen-specific T cells. Here are the tetramers. So this tumor model is known to express a viral protein that is called GP70 from a um, virus, the MMLV, and then allowed it to track antigen-specific T cells. And indeed, here is we track in blood, spleen, and tumor the antigen-specific T cells. So based on the treatment, we push the increase of the frequency on the CD8 of those total uh, antigen-specific T cells. And then, again, this comes always on the preparation of single-cell suspension, like previously been described. Based on the single-cell suspension, you can do track, you can do early spot, that is also a quality of and um, re-stimulation of the cells, because you use specific peptides to stimulate and then quantify the factor function by early spot here. And here we tested blood, uh, so T cells uh, from blood or from tumor, and indeed in the SC1 treated mice, the activation and the factor function was higher. Later we will come up more with the intracellular staining. And uh, so for this part, I want to just to conclude that is the IV administration of SC1 induced the TLR7 dependent immunocell activation, that is interferon alpha and PDC dependent induced uh, SC1 a potent antitumoral effect. I don't show you the comparative study, but it's published recently, so you can have a look of all the comparative study with other TLR7 agonists. And then the activation and the polarization of the immune response to TH1, and as well as um, the tumor environment is associated uh, for, uh, to prone and to favor an, anti an antitumoral response. So this is uh, mediated by the antigen, CD8 antigen-specific T cells that we didn't show here, but they are under the depletion and these are the major mediator of this uh, therapy. So then I come to the really uh, part of Tron that was really strong in the design of RNA vaccine, briefly, and plus the um, system. So Tron developed so far two types of RNA vaccine, one based on immunogenic RNA, so it's an intrinsic RNA, standard RNA, that have an intrinsic um, mechanism of activation of the immune system because it's a extract, so it's a RNA, uh, mRNA, and then induce an activation of TLR7 mainly, and then induce a potent immunogenicity. And so that's why we call these uh, mainly for priming, so for vaccination, for induce a T cell response based on the dendritic cells um, expression of an uptake of this vaccine. And then we have the non-immunogenic RNA for chemical that you can find in this review more the detail. Chemical modified RNA are insensitive to the immune system. So it's a pseudouridine inserting on the mRNA, so the immune system do not sense this viral infection. So do not secrete interferon alpha. They see uptake expressed, but they do not induce immunogenicity but tolerance. So this is something that I wanted to um, show you briefly. The vaccine is injected by lipoplex, so particles that are 300 nanometers big into the bloodstream of mice or human. You will see some of the clinical data. In reach the spleen, and then they trigger mainly priming of CD8 or CD4, depending on the epitope and the endogenous match on the class 2 and class 1. Um, the most important part was indeed uh, to show that was mediated by the uptake of dendritic cells. This is a CD11C depleted mouse that we use RNA look. So whenever you inject RNA look uh, IV, then 24 hours later, if you don't deplete, you have mainly massively expression of the look RNA in the spleen, no other organs. In the paper, it's really nice described all the other organs that are not 
um, trigger the expression of the antigen, while when you deplete the, the dendritic cells, the expression is chromatically reduced. And those are the cells that mainly uptake the particle and express the protein. So not only viral, uh, it's also translation of the protein. So here we visualize again who are the cells that express, and, man oh, sorry, and mainly are the dendritic cells as depicted here, but and also extensively with a new system of amplification of the signal, we were able to show a massive expression of cells that are definitely involved in the climbing later on on the G cells. So these are the first data that we share in community based on the head neck cancer model, HPV driven positive tumor based on the vaccination of E67. So if you don't uh, treat the mice um, or you treat with an irrelevant uh, uh, RNA, the mice die around day 30, so at day 40 no mice survive. And then those mice that are treated at day seven after, vaccine, uh, after tumor inoculation or day 10 and later also day 13, they dramatically reduce the tumor, so almost prevent the tumor formation. And those are in other tumor models we tested, those lipoplex 2 in B16 in melanoma with the GLP-1 antigen. This is another uh, model and another antigen used for melanoma. And then for CD26, again, with the neoantigen. This time is not anymore the viral expressed by the, uh, the D cell line, because D cell line expressed these uh, GP70 epitopes, but this is mutation that are um, neoantigens, so CD4 mediated. And um, here we show some of the data where when we indeed uh, vaccinate uh, the mice, we completely eradicate the tumor, again, in an interpronata dependent manner. So these are a few of the data for the clinical trial. And nicely, you can see that then this lipoplex is injected in patients with the vaccination one, four, five, or et cetera. You can mount different, and this is uh, the antibody specific for, um, sorry, the T cell specific for the New York Halo antigen. And so those patient mount in time a very nice T cell response that is really, really easily detected in blood. And this is our immunomonitoring program that always associate to the clinical trial. So cancer therapy, as you know, have many pillar to attack. So RNA vaccination is now our milestone, but of course need to be combined with other more common um, standard care. And this is something that for trans uh, research is always very far to think about, but when you work in translation oncology, you definitely need to always couple what is in clinic, so which is the therapy that you have in clinic to mirror their in a research, because very often they don't know how still how it works. And this was the example of radiotherapy. So two PhD students joined Tron, and then they addressed this uh, uh, RNA vaccine in HPV positive cancers. And first, Christian developed the E7 vaccination that, as you can see here, a 3 vaccination with E7 RNA, 40% of your circulated cells are HPV positive. This is definitely very, very strong that barely you reach with the peptide vaccination. But uh, definitely is something that was very useful to us as a tool to then to attack with the anti-tumoral effect. And these are the data that have been published before uh, with uh, the PhD uh, Elena. And then those are the data that we didn't publish yet uh, were mainly when we inject uh, the vaccine 13 days after tumor. So you can reach tumor, as you can see here, that reach 1,000 millimeter cubes, and then they are rejected. But if you stop RNA vaccination, everybody come up. So you have a massive relapse. That's why we wanted to combine with other therapy, because RNA vaccine cannot do, obviously, everything. And this is um, the characterization of the tumor environment that Christian and um, Nadia did in TC1 and T3, so two HPV-positive tumor model. And again, it resembles what we established previously in the other studies, so polarization of M1 and 2. So RNA vaccination favor M1 transition, polarization of macrophages in the two tumor model, and then also by uh, infiltration of the CD8. The massive important in this tumor model, since it's HPV, so viral antigen driven, the induction of CD8 was very strong and very potent. So this is also a new way to plot the data where we have the different population of the lymphocyte that you can see, this is depicted in the CD8. And uh, of course, in the Arilip, you have a higher number of uh, CD8 compared to the control. 
We investigate by fluidine again, the tumor. This is still bad, but then we are now performing this analysis in the single cell base with the 10 genomics. We don't have yet uh, the data to share. But um, definitely, this was a large panel, as previously uh, done in the other study that we follow based on the um, uh, chemokines and activation, the tumor environment. And indeed, uh, you could see they became very hot. So each seven RNA-treated mice can have a very strong uh, Th1 uh, immunoresponse. And these are the TC1 tumor model or the C3. So, Another approach was definitely to have uh, the radiotherapy, and I don't enter into detail, it's just to give you that it's a very old therapy, and just recently has been used and uh, it find that the RNA vaccination, RNA can induce the ascopal effect. So definitely our irradiation that was studied for many, many, many years, uh, just recently has been viewed by immunologists as a way to prime your immune system. And indeed, there's a lot of evidence. I don't enter into the detail, but uh, the, mainly the stereotactic or the local radiotherapy with a very high dose that you can go very focal in the tumor environment exclusively can induce an immune response. So, mechanism are still under investigation, but of course, uh, the DNA damage and the activation into the tumor cell is really well study for decades, but the most important is that, nevertheless, how the immune system sends this image. And this is our interest in to understand in the loop of, obviously, the immune uh, in activation into the lymph node, how the dendritic cells from the tumor can bring all these um, apoptotic bodies or tumor debris into the lymph node to prime and activate antigen-specific T cells. And this was Nadia was doing. We had the access to the X-ray. I designed a DECA shield where we have a lead shield for 10 miles. So you don't need to do a radiation for one mouse because it's 30 minutes every mouse. So you could imagine a PhD student was interested to come to my program. So when I saw Nadia, this shield, I said, okay, let's deal. For 30 minutes, at least I have 30, 10 miles irradiated. And then we have generally the size of 100 miles per study, so definitely a time commitment for here. But um, this is the first experiment that actually I generated as a proof of concept and was very, very nice because, of course, RNA vaccination in suboptimal setting now. So not like Christian was using for repetitive vaccination every week, but now only one vaccination. And then to give a room to the radiotherapy to show its effect because otherwise we rejected the tumor, as I showed you. And we, were, we didn't want to show remission or the relapse study of tumor immunology. We wanted to study how tumor rejection is ongoing. And so we combined with 14, 8 or 2 gray, and as you can see, the combination effect is a dose dependent, while irradiation alone bear a very mild effect as depicted by the tumor survival here. And, um, right, so the combination therapy is really potent in, the, in this setting and is again in TH, uh, TC1, so HPV-driven tumor, and we are working now also for neoantigen in 626 tumor model. And this is also in the field of radiotherapy, it's not only one single shot, but this is good, a patient comes once a week, instead to come three times a week, so believe that for radiotherapy, patients have to go for six weeks every day for radiotherapy. So if you have a chance to have a protocol that the patient comes once a week on, they will be very, very grateful. And that's why we, we stick on this, because it allowed you a translational, um, a better translational setting. And, but the equivalent uh, for the abscobal effect that is the spike published, that this will be better, we didn't see so far biological difference. We investigated the tumor environment, that's why I was uh, uh, happy to show you the data that are not yet published, but under revision. And uh, here is the part of um, classical CD45 cells, tumor cells, because we want to study also the phenotype of tumor cells. And these are the cells that are recruited into the tumor, the antigen specific, so it's a massive induction of these cells by the RNA. But the most important and frustrated for Nadia at that time, no difference between monotherapy RNA and combo. And you could see already here, so the two curves start to reject the tumor simultaneously, but this is the time point that we want to, we hope to see, or to start to see some difference for the two groups. Because as I showed you before, one group completely relapse, and the other uh, completely relapse, and the other completely reject. So it is a biological strong difference. 
But unfortunately, T cells do not have a different gene sequencing. More further, more frustration for Nadia, no different in effect of function. So she took, uh, she expanded T cells, and that's why we came for the cytokines, and we also triggered in the paddle LAMP1 and uh, so CD107 degranulation and IO2. So these are the four intracellular staining that we do. And then in this re-stimulation, again, both T cells, when we extract from the tissue and we put in vitro for this ex vivo assay, they perform equivalently well. So they can kill the target cell, despite, again, in vivo, one reject and one relapse. So what was, um, despite I was insisting, let's check for the tumor environment. Oh, sorry. First, we validate part of the things with a master student, Jennifer, the join, and again, uh, CD8 infiltration into the tumor do not differ, also by immunofluorescence, of course, into the two groups, so monotherapy and combo. These are the group that uh, me and Sebastian we are, and Mustafa, we are mentoring, are organizing, so the animal model and the T-cell vaccine here with the PhD student, Nadia, here. Um, Christian is not here anymore. He just he left already for BioNTech. Um, and then, uh, of course, the people involved in the production of RNA and the formulation, and, uh, and the people who are performing the animal model experiments in vivo. And thank you for your attention.